Welcome to Cornerstone Customer Stories, a series of casual lunch conversations with Cornerstone subject matter experts and clients, discussing how they have pushed tech boundaries. Today, we'll be sitting down with Peter Shoesmith, Network Operations Manager at Cummings & Lockwood, Jim Morial, Principal at Cornerstone.it, and Gilbert Mendoza, Senior I Manage Engineer at Cornerstone.it. Thank you, gentlemen. Jim, tell us a little bit about Cornerstone's history with Cummings and Lockwood. Sure. Thank you, Adriana. Appreciate uh, you for setting this up and uh, welcome everyone who's uh, who's joining this recording. Um, yeah, we were uh, we were introduced to Cummings and Lockwood by iManage a number of years ago. Uh, they had an existing um, on-prem imp implementation that they were looking to improve upon, and they also needed to do a records management migration. Um, and so we were we were very happy to get engaged and sort of come in with our technical expertise and uh, assist Peter and, and Melissa and his staff to uh, to help with their um, their upgrades and 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 implementations. Uh, so I, uh, maybe I'll ask Peter if you could just uh, maybe give us sort of a um, a uh, high level, you know, the work that we've done, have done with Cornerstone, maybe the life cycle of, of what you've been doing with iManage, uh, just to kind of frame out the, the discussion. Sure. Um, we've been using uh, iManage or what was previously iManage interwoven, and I, I know it's gone through a few different name changes, but um, we migrated from an old document management uh, group wise version in 2004. Um, actually to, um, you know, what was then, uh, I believe it was 8.0 or 8, yeah, it was 8.0 SP2 um, through, you know, a major um, server upgrade and infrastructure upgrade and also a switch to exchange at the same time. So um, we were, you know, obviously looking for something that was more robust, that was SQL based. And, uh, you know, we needed to get all the data that was in what was then called blobs, um, you know, into a, uh, a more modern um, and uh, high performance document management system. So, um, so we were on that version, we've updated, you know, two or three times over the years um, where we kind of left off, we were at, um, you know, close to pretty much 8.5 8 SP2. Uh, by the time that Cornerstone came uh, into play, um, you know, and that's where we required some um, some of your expertise to get it, um, you know, upgraded properly and and, and done seamlessly. Um, now, at the same time, um, as you mentioned, we had a older record system called FileSurf that was, uh, you know, getting uh, or lacking support. Um, and was going to be end of life uh, before you know it. So we also needed to upgrade um, those those products as well to something that integrated well with um, the document management that we were um, updating. Okay, thank you, thank you. And now uh, um, I, I didn't realize you were in a, on a group-wise platform that uh, that kind of dates all of us. <laughs> yes, <laughs> to know what that is uh, uh, or I'm, was. Yes, I'm. I feel mu much older than I uh, sometimes feel. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um, could you also tell us? So you're on eight five. You know, it's been a, a pretty classic version. But what else were you looking to get out of the upgrade to to nine dot x or ten? Like, were you was there also workspace design and some other products and yes. capabilities? Okay. Um, well, one of the interesting things um, that was included in, in the project was we were still in flat space filing. Um, we were not matter centric. Um, a lot of our, our business uh, practices were obviously matter centric um, with the record system and what have you. But in terms of the actual document management, we were not. So as part of this project, um, it was really implementing um, you know, matter centricity for the firm, um, both from, from the, the technical hurdles involved and the, um, the logistical or the, or the business practices, um, which is what we probably needed a lot of uh, handholding with. Um, 
you know, because you, you really have to design, um, you know, each workspace or each grouping of workspaces to, to enhance your business and to make things as seamless as possible. Um, and that's one thing that Cornerstone really uh, helped us kind of hit it out of the park with getting things lined up um, properly. Um, I, I think half of the project um, was a lot more uh, logistical and planning, you know, and business practices, how, how your business works, how the different uh, area of laws work um, within your within your company um, or within our law firm. So, um, you know, obviously server upgrades and the, the technical uh, needs of those resources that are needed for, you know, RAM and CPU and, and uh, redundancy and what have you are important, but just as important, if not more, is the, the design um, of the whole system. So that was huge. Yeah, so be, before I pick Gilbert's brains about the design, how did you um, how did you enroll or encourage or facilitate those conversations with the different practice groups? I mean, did you have to wrestle them into a room, or did you have some evangelists within the firm? How did you how did you get to go from a flat space um, culturally to uh, to matter centric design? Um, that was a that was a huge amount of teamwork, um, mostly with specific people, including um, on our end, Melissa Cox, um, meeting with the department heads of each department uh, for litigation, for real estate, for um, what's called our PCG department, private clients department, um, and showing them, you know, what what's the overall structure? Do you use these type of folders? What type of files do you save, you know, and what would make your life easier? You know, um, <clears throat> you know, one of the big um, benefits that we keep on that we pushed um, was being able to very quickly file information, um, you know, once or twice or create a link between your workspaces and your your email folders and to be able to, uh, you know, kind of create that relationship once and then from there on out, as long as you copy it to the folder or you save it to the folder, um, everything's gonna be organized. It's not like reinventing the wheel. Um, so having those discussions of what their needs were and trying to consolidate as much of them to being the same. So, you know, um, that helped along the way of, of really making it as easy to use and then um, when we were ready with a basic design for the, each individual uh, area of law or department, we definitely did a dog and pony show. That was, I think, critical to getting buy-in um, of doing a demo, a real live demo with our actual data, with a test set of data so that they could see their client data um, in the workspaces as it was intended. Um, and doing those kind of lunch and learns with the uh, small groups of attorneys or even the, and the secretaries um, really helped, you know, push the, the idea along of going matter, cent you know, matter centricity. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that's, and that's a great point. So the, the, uh, the demos were not just your traditional sort of product demos. This is the bells and whistles that you have. Mm -hmm. It's an, it was an actual Hey, this is your. This is one of your clients. This is some of your matters for that client, and you could see the data. So that I, that's great, um, Gilbert. If I could pick your brains, how did you um, uh, how did you prepare that demo? You know, what were part of those discussions with the different practice groups, the attorneys, and their assistants? So Melissa Cox, who I worked very closely with on this project. Uh, Essentially, she and I had meetings between us, and uh, I counseled her on, you know, best practices and some of the things that, uh, you know, she would bring me the information, and she actually came to me with a set of a starting point. And so I worked with her to refine that uh, and sort of teaching her, you know, the the interface and you know when when certain things I didn't agree with or things that I had seen um, or just didn't recommend 
so I gave her my best recommendations based based on my experience, and then she had the meetings. So I didn't participate in the meetings in this particular okay. scenario, uh, but we, you know, it was iterative and it was a real collaboration, and um, you know, trying to get the actual best scenario for each of the practices. And there were a number of them. I think, Peter, what was it? I think there are 16 or 17 different practices that we did. I can't remember exactly how many, but there's there's quite a few. And then we also implemented um, flexible folders within that as well. So we, you know, had uh, her work with the users to determine what was, you know, a core folder, what would be a core folder and what would be something that they may need in the future. And so that became, uh, sort of the design, and then she evangelized it and uh, educated her users. And I and I have to say, Gilbert, that flexible folder idea really helped out standardized of having not too many templates, not too many workgroup templates, so that you know we had kind of one standard thing for for ninety percent of everything, and then those you know lists of flexible folders that it could stay standardized. It wasn't having you know, somebody type in and then accidentally putting in the wrong spelling for a folder that everybody uses. Yeah. You know, exactly. so it it really made it um, you know, streamlined and and um you know very well organized. So we're That's great. very happy with that. Good. And that of course would increase adoption for people to file things in the right place, which is exactly what you want. So that's great. Yes, because what would always happen is people would say folders or, or items um you know within their own mailbox you know even if it was linked and then you know an attorney or somebody would leave and then we would have to keep that data somehow uh around for an extended period of time so right. and, and one thing i always keep on telling people that you know exchange is not a storage system it's a messaging yeah. system it's right. not meant to be stored in there um, if it's for you know longer than even you know six months to a year, if if that, um, so that was very beneficial having those flexible folders in place and, and getting it to work yes. um, properly. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, I'm sorry, just ahead, one Gilbert. just one quick note. I did note in when we did the migration very shortly thereafter, the amount of email that was saved into the system grew tremendously. So it was that was a real sign that people were actually adopting mail filing too. So that's great. Yeah, Absolutely. And I guess to, to Peter's point, right, you were linking folders and so there was a, you set up that relationship once and then it was, uh, that was established going forward that all the emails for that matter or client would, would just sync up with, with iManage. So now tell me about the, uh, the training, Peter, did, um, uh, so there was so Melissa did the demos um, of live data. Um, how did you go about training? You, I know you have uh, multiple offices. Getting the folks to um, cut over to the new matter centric design. Now we did have um, a few different scenarios. Um, there, there was a training manual that was created that was um, fine tuned by. Um, a combination of Diane Crandall, um, one of our managers of the of the help desk and, and uh, user administration, um, as well as Melissa um, and a few other people involved. Um, but we did have a third party um, company come in and help us uh, fine tune um, with the scheduling and getting uh, you know the right uh, you know syllabus, so to speak, together um, to to. Kind of combine as much as possible in a short period. We didn't want, um, truthfully, I shouldn't say we didn't want, our attorneys <laughs> didn't want to be sit, sit, sitting in a conference room for, you know, a couple days going over everything. Right. So the idea was actually we had two different types of training. I'm, I'm trying to remember now because it's been a little while, but um, we, we really did two types of training, one geared towards the attorney and then one geared towards the secretary's assistance and uh, fiduciary accounts. Okay. Um, so that way, you know, an attorney could come in, get a, a brief overview or a general idea of what matter centricity is right. um, and how to do the basic actions they do on a daily basis. So rather than teaching them going, you know, down the row of every single feature, Right. The most important thing for rollout was having them to be able to do 
you know, their tasks they do on a daily basis. So part of coming up with that syllabus really was creating that list of, okay, secretary, um, you know, saves documents, they uh, file email, they create new matter memos, they, you know, well, what do they do related to the new document management and what changes for them? So the idea is we really only changed, we were, excuse me, we were only really trained on those items so that we could get the turnaround quickly, them trained and then back into working with it. Um, it. Now we did add some features that were trained uh, specifically, one being flexible folders, which is a totally new idea. The idea of matter centricity that was in the training. And then um, also I manage share integration. Okay. Which we haven't talked about, but that was implemented at the same time to allow, um, you know, matter folders, so to speak, or uh, documents to be shared with the outside world securely. Um, you know, so, training on that as well and how to use it um, and how it's integrated with with iManage as a whole, um, you know, th those things were trained on. Now, was, uh, Share, was Share a whole new concept or were you, did you move from another type of uh, file sharing platform? Yeah, we, we had, you know, it's like anything, we were using a lot of different products, you know, for different clients or, you know, using Citrix Share file for some, you know, some things and, uh, you know, some people still wanted to use Dropbox for whatever reason, not us per se, but some clients just right. because it made it easy for them. Um, and what, one of the great things is, is, is it really made it a nice way to consolidate it and say, this is what we use when we share items, you, you know, we will use this to share documents or to send links or or for clients to upload to a folder and, and right. um, collaborate. Um, okay. So it, it was another thing that actually helped us out um, in also buying into the matter centricity um, right. because it starts to leeway or start to, to go towards having uh, client portals, you know, and, and things like that, that make it uh, interactive for the client to, you know, work with us you know, rather than just these emails back and forth, back and forth with lots of attachments that, you know, it's hard to keep track of or what have yeah. you. Yeah. So now this was um, two years ago, three years ago. I'm trying to keep track of time. Uh, well, I'm curious to, to know, um, you know, what's changed since the rollout? Have you mm -hmm. um, consolidated further? Did you create new templates? Did you change your flexible folder? What, how did that evolve since the cutover? Sure. Um, the majority of things have been really uh, patching, believe it or not. We've had a few upgrades here and there. Um, we have uh, had renewal of certificates along the way, of course, because, you know, they right. only last so long. Right. Um, yeah, that, that's one of the, <laughs> the wonderful things about moving to, from a, you know, non-web or non, uh, you know, sort of internet-based or web-based technology with the older version, the the, uh, the regular, you know, classic client, so to speak, um, into the iWork 10. So um, there is um, some extra work involved with that as well as um, single sign-on. That's one another piece we had implemented with this, um, right. um, with ADFS specifically for us, but, you know, SAML um, single sign-on technology um, so people don't get prompted for, you know, username and passwords. Right, so, right. Um, so besides the certificate, though, for ongoing, we've done that. We've also um, done a lot more rollouts with um, the actual mobile okay. uh, version of um, the client that can go on iPads and iPhones and things like that. So we've been slowly playing with that, um, you know, and with our latest um, rollout, uh, which we're putting, you know, the latest version of Windows 10, new desktop PCs, new monitors, et cetera. Um, we've been rolling out the latest client, um, which is the iWork 10, Win 10 client, right. which is an all pretty much um, a web-based client. Um, and just so you know, for the rollout originally, we had done all new backend of iWork 10, but we were, for the initial transition, we stayed with a 9.3 client. 
And that is because we were working on rolling out a whole new desktop. Right. Um, so it made sense to do the matter centricity, the iWork 10 upgrade all together and keep that, you know, a little bit newer client, but not quite go to iWork 10, you know, until we were ready to roll out the desktop. So, but now that we're actually in the midst of rolling out the new desktop, um, we have had um, some help uh, specifically with Gilbert to um, uh, help fine tune the iWork 10 client because it is a little bit different and the options are different and the capabilities are different. Okay. Um, so we have been working to get that fine tuned and then we're going to, we're in the midst of rolling that out um, with new machines. So okay. that interface is slightly different, but the great thing is they've all been trained on matter centricity and they all have the basic ideas. So it's really just a matter of having a quick, um, around one hour training, that's what we're kind of uh, shooting for, one to two hours at most, um, of just the differences between the old desktop and the new desktop. Uh, that's great. So Gilbert, can you talk a little bit about that transition? So uh, they were on the legacy client, and I'm sorry, Peter, was desk site, file site, both? What did you guys, uh, what do you um, use? We only used file site previously. Um, with the new desktop, we've kind of, we're, we have iWork Web, we have the, the integrated uh, Win 10 desktop with the, the panel on the side, um, you know, plus the mobile. I mean, so we have pretty much every kind of everything rolled out um, with the, uh, the new desktop. So people have a lot of different options. Okay. Um, so and so let sorry, me just ahead. add one more thing too. And related to that, we've also updated from the records point of view, to the iWork web, the IRM web, which is a newer version of the um, the client for records that integrates very well with um, with the iWork web, so that you can view record items right from the same screen just by clicking on a link. That's great. Um, I do want to I do want to chat about the records, but Gilbert, can you talk a little bit about transitioning from the legacy client to the Work Ten and the work you've done with? Peter and, and Melissa and, and the Cummings folks? Yeah, so uh, Melissa and I have, essentially what we, we work together to translate what their, essentially their settings and their syntaxes were in uh, file site uh, to, you know, work 10 where applicable. And then, you know, I basically, we had a couple of sessions where we went through all the settings and because Mel Melissa really wants to know, I really appreciate she's, very hands-on and really wants to know everything about how it works. So we went through a lot of the choices. She actually put those in with some test users and then, you know, gave feedback. And so we worked once again, very closely to, to make sure that the settings were correct. Um, and, you know, any little bugs that came up, we worked together uh, to, to solve all those little issues. Um, so, but yeah, and then they're keeping desk site and file site is off the table, Peter, if I'm, if I'm not incorrect. So uh, work 10 for Windows is, uh, desktop is replacing file site. So they do have the, the email management in Outlook. So there will be a consistency okay. there. And then for those people that are non adopters or prefer to use the older clients, they're going to be using desk site. So, um, yeah, but it was, it right. was, uh, yeah, that's correct. Yep. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, no, no problem. So let's talk a little bit about the, about the records migration. So you were on file surf, um, implemented, um, IRM, um, on prem, um, we had Nietzsche and her team do that uh, implementation and migration. Um, I don't know, Peter, can you give us some background on that? Was file surf end of life? Um, was it, uh, you know, what, what were some of the reasons to move to, to IRM? Um, file surf, yes, was end of life. Um, it was uh, very much ingrained in the culture because uh, the this, this same product, you know, through, the, through different iterations, you know, was around for the last 15 years or, or more. Um, so we needed something that could um, obviously do all the thing, all the features and all the functionality that FileServe could do, but we wanted it to be as integrated as possible um, with the document management um, and also have features like built-in scanning and, and cover sheets and um, 
ways of of marking, um, you know, marking documents as records, you know, without going back and forth between two different products, you know, right. things that you know, two products that would talk to each other um, specifically. Um, the other thing is we wanted to have, um, you know, not more than one repository areas. Um, where with FileSurf, we had a whole nother file store that was specifically records related that we had to manage and, and worry about and what have you. Um, you know, being able to consolidate as many products as possible into, into one, both from a manufacturer standpoint um, and a product standpoint, um, you know, is great. Now, they, they are two totally separate products, you know, so to speak. Um, but the nice thing is that they do have the functionality with the policy manager um, and the different clients for them to start working together, especially with iWork 10. Um, you know, even from an iWork web standpoint, as what I mentioned before, you can literally go to a matter in iWork web and go to a folder or that matter and say view records. And it will bring up within the, sort of the same window, you know, automatically log you in, pass the credentials. Right. you know, and allow you to see that information. Um, so we we wanted it to be as seamless as possible without having to retrain everybody. So right. the great thing is that they already knew that at that point they were trained on matter centricity. So they got the basic gist of that. And then from there, it's it's a matter of um, translating the, the few differences between the two products. Now, obviously there's a lot more changes for the records administrators and um, the people actually in the in the file rooms. Right. Uh, that interface is completely different. But um, the nice thing is that you know the end user though could you know pretty much jump on board immediately, knowing that okay this folder has twenty items in them and anything that's got a little um, locker a little uh, icon by it shows that it's part of the record. Um, yeah you know, and vice versa. Um, so if they, they need to see what's in, you know, electronic form or in the actual file room, right. you know, they can see the differences between the two. Um, you know, and again, there's there's not really any more training involved because the structure is matter-centric, just like the records room is. So um, it translates very well. Okay. And so it sounds like you have both digital and and physical records and it also and you also have the attorneys are using it. I know some firms really it's the records department that's the only users of of mm -hmm. the records management system, but it sounds like you do have your attorneys using it, declaring records, et cetera. Yes, absolutely. Um, especially when it comes to the email management function, you know, that that integrates, you know, the records and the email together to being able to say, okay, anything that is you know, filed into the document management, you know, automatically becomes a record. You know, there's right. a, there's all kinds of features depending on how you work. Right. You know, you can you can set up those things that save, you know, an incredible amount of time from an attorney standpoint. And once they get the demo and they they see it with their data, I think that was a, a key thing of not seeing someone else's data. Um, you know, they could translate to what they do now. Um, into the new system and see how beneficial it is for it to be all um, integrated together. Yeah, and, that, and that's what you kind of hit on it. That's the main purpose of it all, right? You're saving the attorney time, you're keeping them productive, and then and in, in the end, um, profitable. So that's kind of good to bring it all together. Let me, let me ask you something. You mentioned about mobility earlier, and in, in this sort of COVID world that we're living in today, how, um, if anything, have the attorneys worked differently now that most of them are working from home um how do you deliver um how do you deliver your i manage clients are they using mo mobile mobility more like how they how have they adapted in this covid world um truthfully not much has changed from our standpoint um just because with a combination of vpn and citrix and remote desktops and what have you you know they can access everything in the office like they do or they could access everything at home like they do in the office. So, um, you know, th there's no major changes besides there's some people that, you know, might have the client on their desktop, on their iPad or whatever, or 
that makes it easier for them to quickly reference something or access something. So, um, you know, in that way, you know, from home, they're accessing their full client. Um, they're access accessing the full records client and information as well. And again, the, the more information that's in the record system that's been scanned in, whether it be bills or, or whatever business practices we've put in place, um, you know, the more and more that becomes paperless, the more right. that can be accessed from anywhere. Because one of the big problems, obviously, is we still have a lot of data or there has been a lot of data in the records room physically. Yeah. So what do you do to access that in a COVID world um, where not everybody can always be in the, in the records room to grab that information? Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's where business practices come in and business continuity and, and trying to get as much data that you would need on a, on a semi short term basis available, you know, in electronically in the system. Right. Um, right. Okay. Yeah, that's that's uh, yeah, that's the world we're all living in. You not people are not uh, are not back at the office. How do you deal with those physical records, the mail rooms, etc.? Mm -hmm. um, and so, like you said, the business practices are adop adopting to that. Um, you, you and the one the sorry, one other thing I'm just going to throw in there that I thought of is we've been actually now using workspaces to store video in. Um, okay. Because part of COVID is for um, will signings and et cetera, and notar notary signings, we've got an approval to sign those um, over a video conference system, specifically Teams or Blue Jeans or what have you. So we actually uh, record those signings, archive them, and then they know how to store. We've created an actual flexible folder for videos wow. that are stored there and it's required for us to store it for 10 years. So, um, and then obviously archive it in the, in the record system, mark it as a record. And um, so that, that is something different that people are doing remotely, um, you know, definitely in, the, in, this, in this COVID environment. Did you need to make any modifications as far as the application integration or uh, document or video types in preparation for that? Yeah, file type uh, changes did have to be made to make sure that to um, you know that the the actual video format came in uh, the way we wanted it to, um, and obviously the flexible folder had to be created um, you know for the different um, area of laws or or departments. Um, but that you know that was pretty straightforward for the most part, though. Okay, cool. That's great. That's interesting uh, use case. Makes sense. Uh, it definitely makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, so you've got the Windows 10 rollout, and that's going to give uh, the attorney staff, other professionals, the new Work 10 interface. Anything else that you have plans? Um, I know it's a brave new world, so planning for the future is a little bit different than in the past. But uh, looking forward to 2021 um, or beyond, or is there are there products or tools from iManage or otherwise related to document management that you're considering for the future? Um, well, we are looking to increase our redundancy for one um, when it comes to uh, um, having auto failover and, um, you know, load balancing between multiple iManage work servers. Okay. Um, you know, so that's definitely something that we're um, looking at implementing uh, across the board. I mean, right now we have, um, you know, the basic type of replication um, to our DR site where it has another work server you know, identical, up and running, ready to go in case of a, um, a disaster or um, a business continuity event, okay. um, things like that. Um, also looking at possibly moving to the, the latest indexer. Um, right, right, because we are, we are still, yeah, because we're still on idle at the moment. Right. Uh, so um, th those are probably two of the things we're, we're looking to do at the, you know, this, in the semi near future. Got it. Okay, good. Um, this was, uh, I, th I think, very helpful, especially for the folks that are tuning in or looking to do similar work, Manicentric design, upgrades, Work 10 clients, records migration. Any, um, I'll ask uh, Gilbert first and then close with Peter. Any other thoughts, Gilbert, you want to share about the projects, the work we've done over at Cummings, iManage in general? Um, I think with this particular project, I mean, I really, um, well, one, you guys were just so great to work with, but the uh, 
the planning that you have done is I think really a you know a very important piece to note. So the way the way that you migrated in the first place, the back end as you had discussed, and the users, you know, we basically affected the users in the least possible way, but gave them so much for the changes that they did have to make. And then your progressive uh, way of migrating, I think has been really, really good. Uh, the other thing just to bring up, um, and this is something that I see a lot with clients, and uh, we did have some truing up of data with respect to the source of client matters in the time and billing system. So we did, there was a cleanup, Peter, I don't know if you recall um, internally, um, yes. of getting getting all the data from FileSurf, DM or uh, iManage 8.5 that they had, and uh, is it Adderant that you're using? I believe Adderant, Adderant. For, for time and billing, yes. Yeah, so there was a project in there to get all that clean up, and my, I remember discussing it with uh, the team at the time, and my my response to that was, you know, clean it up before we do this, or you're going to be mm -hmm. cleaning it up forever. <laughs> and so there was a big effort and a really yes. great effort to clean that up, and we you know, I would, you know, I kind of want to see with Peter, like, do you recall, like, the work involved and, it, you know, what's your reaction to some of the things that got simplified, whether it was provisioning all these systems, mm -hmm. you know, like we really worked hard to make that sort of effortless for your team. So that was another piece, too, that I think people should really think about. Yeah, I I agree that um, kind of that was a huge prep work project. It was almost a project in itself, I would say. Um, because, you know, you have different database sources, you know, one from records, one from time and billing, one from, you know, uh, an in-house database system, um, you know, and then document management. So finding a good fit for one database to quote unquote be the master database, um, you know, where it's entered in once rather than four or five times, um, which was part of the process in creating a workflow for when a new matter is created that it from start to finish it goes through creates it in the you know the time and billing system and then it shows up in in um, the document management and a uh, workspace is uh, then with the workspace creator is automatically created so um, you know cornerstone was you know ex ex extremely important in that getting that process working and streamlined um, Truthfully, if you're right, if that wasn't cleaned up properly, it would be a mess, um, especially the import. When you get into the data import, then, um, you know, you're going to be cleaning up for years and years after if yeah. if everything doesn't line up. And now we have so many less issues with inconsistencies because you don't have four different people entering the same information um, with, you know, a new client and a matter name and the number and everything else um, in multiple systems. You know, if it's, th and that's the other thing, if it's entered in wrong the first time, it's going to enter wrong everywhere. But that's good because that's consistent. Then. There's yeah, consist right. consistency in that. And we so, also put in place a, a means to correct that if there was a correction. So, yes. Um, so a lot of those workflows, those SQL, you know, uh, customize SQL jobs, et cetera. Um, putting those in place, you know, help helped it from day one, and then um, you know, day to day, uh, it is in invaluable um, to to have those uh, business sort of scripts in in place. So I totally agree that that's huge, um, especially when you're coming from um, a system that has so much data over the years of of even before file surf, it was in Barrister, you know, you know, Correct. old, old record system um, that I dealt with years ago. So, um, you know, there, there was still information from there that was, you know, had to be cleaned up. Um, yeah. So, you know, that was critical. Yeah, yeah. And then the attorneys have a level of trust in the data and the reliability of it. And, and, uh, you're probably not getting as many calls about, hey, I don't feel comfortable, you know, where is this? I can't find that. If the uh, if sort of the source and, and, the, um, and the databases are reliable, then um, you're going to have that much more trust and, and use of your of your systems. Related to that, too, is like you said, finding things, having one place 
you know, to find all records data, all email data, all uh, documents and uh, matter information, what have you, and having it all display sort of in, uh, uh, you know, quote unquote, one pane of glass, you know, is, you know, fantastic. I mean, that, that saves a bundle of time, especially once people get, you know, a little used to the syntax of, you know, um, how, how to make it powerful to drill down, especially with, the, uh, with training with the new system, you know, of where it's almost like a shopping cart, like you're on Amazon and you're just filtering through how to narrow down, what, find exactly what you need in the, in the shortest amount of time. You know, that's hugely valuable um, from an attorney standpoint and a secretary standpoint. Yeah, that's perfect. I think that's that's an excellent closing comment, Peter. That uh, you kind of one place to find it all, and being able to find it is uh, is 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 critical. The attorneys. Well, I I wanted to thank you guys very much for your time. Uh, um, this uh, this video will be put up on uh, the Connect Live site, and then just uh, made available to clients who are interested in doing the same work. So I'm, I'm sure this is going to be very helpful for them and their and their projects. So Peter, thank you very much for your time. And Gilbert, thank you very much for your time. And Adriana, we're going to hand it back to you. And thank you for uh, for setting this all up. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Sure. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening in today. We hope you found this helpful and look forward to you joining us on future episodes. Please reach out to Jim Morio at jim.morio at cornerstone.it with any of your IT questions.